Let's maintain the focus on Australian films by women directors now by going on location with The Girl Who Came Late, which was directed by Cathy Muller of The Magistrate fame. It's the rather unusual story of a girl who thought she was a horse, and in the title role is Miranda Otto, daughter of Barry, with import Martin Kemp, who recently played one of the Crays, as the romantic hero. I wanted to get into a comedy. I wanted to do a comedy selfishly to show the, another side to my ability of hopefully what I can do, you know. And uh, it was a challenging story and the script came and I read it and I thought this would be perfect. It's a really interesting role, really crazy role. So that, and there's not many of those sort of come up. There's a lot of really straight sort of roles that I normally get put up for, but this is a really wacky one. Wife 20, right at the back of the room. Oh, no, sorry, that wasn't me. Well, yes, it was me, but um, I'm not fitting. I thought initially the person would be older, but it became very clear when she, when she performed that the innocence and youth of the character was the most important ingredient for a girl who still thinks she's a horse rather than a woman. She hasn't become a woman yet, she's still a silly girl. Uh, my character's called Mel, and when she was a child, um, she had a bad situation with her parents, and she lived in the stable. She kept away from the family and so she didn't really come in contact with any human beings and so she sort of lived with these horses and sort of thought that she was a horse it's basically about her trying to be accepted for who she is and yeah she just wants to be accepted i guess for me what attracted me to the film was it was about how a dysfunctional human being becomes functional through love and through um maintaining their own values and what they want out of life and looking and searching for it and not being swayed. And it's also a journey of innocence. It's how Nell deals with her, comes to terms with her sexuality, her sensuality, her being a woman, becoming a woman. It's a very nice way of dealing with heavy material. It's a comedy for that reason, and uh, that's what attracts me to it. It's heavy material, but it's done lightly. $100,000 looking for one, 105 at $105,000 and 10. $100,000, $100,000, ladies. Martin is just so right for the role. He's, he, he looks dangerous, but he's very vulnerable. He's um, attractive, very handsome, but not in the classic sense. Um, he's got that sort of um, awkwardness about him, and yet a, a real finesse. And um, he was everything Digby had to be. Digby the entrepreneur, Digby the sort of shady wheeler dealer who's also got a heart of gold. Digby who can't work out about horses, but can work out about money. Um, he was just right. The minute I saw him and he did the lines, I thought, that's Digby. Don't tell me you're going to waste it on that mare of yours. Why? Do you fancy her yourself? <laughs> I started uh, when I was eight. And I was at a drama school for nine years. So um, and when I was eight years old, I, my, I remember my mum taking me to this, like, it was a drama club two nights a week after school. And I think she took me there more to get rid of me than to give me a skill in acting, you know. But um, I went there two nights a week, and I, I was the shyest little boy. And those, those nine years done a real lot for me. It was the best thing my parents ever done. I left the drama school when I was 17. I, I went straight into the band. And I think, you know, some of the band's success was due to the fact that Gary and I had already had that experience. And given that confidence, uh, the younger years in the drama school, I used to actually go to the races a lot because my stepfather's a jockey and uh, I used to be a bit scared of those horses because they're huge and um, quite highly strung. But um, it's been really good because the horses that we're working with here are really calm and, and yeah, I've got a lot closer to understanding horses since we've been doing this, like how to approach them and, and what goes, what's going on in their head, sort of. Do you relate to it? What's Rel going on in their head? Um, I can relate to their, their fear a lot of the time because I, I get really jumpy like that. Someone walks in the room, I go, ah, like that. <laughs> and their horses are very like that. Sometimes you, you approach them too fast and they're really jumpy. But I live in London, right? So when you get on a horse in London and you go to the local hack, you get on and it goes down the country lanes and it knows when to gallop and knows when to trot. And you think you're doing it, you know, you get on, click, oh, this is good. And it doesn't happen like that. You, know, you get on those polo ponies out there, complete individuals. That's fantastic. The difference is incredible. The Girl Who Came Late is in post-production now, and I actually read the screenplay. It's very good. I'm looking forward to seeing it later on. Oh, me too.